I would um, like to advise everyone about a confidential. Whatever we discuss here is a con is confidential. Also, we will be recording the session tonight. So if that is okay with everyone, if that is a problem, if you could just make um, make us aware in the chat at this time, that would be great. I would also like to let you know that this um, presentation will be available online at our Lupus Ontario slash support um, after the this uh, meeting as well. Um, during the meeting, we ask everyone to be muted. There will be time for questions and answers at the end. Um, you can either wait to ask your questions. We will then, you will then be able to unmute yourself and ask the question, or you can make a note of it in the chat. So at this time, I would like to introduce Michelle Boxer. She is um, a social worker and she's also highly involved with Lupus Ontario. She's the Windsor Support Group Facilitator as well as she's part of the Support and Education Committee. So at this time, welcome, Michelle. Hey, thanks, Sandra. So yeah, today I'm excited to be talking to you guys about uh, the topic, taking care of our mental health during social distancing. And let's see if I can get to the next slide here. Okay, there we go. All right, so just a quick agenda. Uh, we're gonna start, uh, since this is a self-care uh, webinar, we're gonna actually start with some self-care and do a little mindfulness activity. Uh, we're gonna be talking about what self-care is um, and then some practical strategies for integrating some self-care into our lives. And then finally, I had a couple of resources that I wanted to share. And as Sandra mentioned, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them at the end. Okay, so we're going to start with our mindfulness activity. Like I mentioned, since uh, this is, uh, you know, we are talking about self-care, I thought it would be nice to start with the mindfulness so that we can get into the right headspace to talk about self-care. So we are going to do uh, progressive muscle relaxation. So all I need you guys to do is just uh, listen and follow along. Okay, so we're going to start uh, to sit down in a comfortable position. Shut your eyes if you're comfortable doing so. Begin by taking a deep breath and noticing the feeling of air filling your lungs. Hold your breath for a few seconds. Release the breath slowly and let the tension leave your body. Take in another deep breath and hold it and slowly release the air. Even slower now, take another breath. Fill your lungs and hold the air. Slowly release the breath and imagine the feeling of tension leaving your body. Now move your attention to your feet. Begin to tense your feet by curling your toes and arch and the arch of your foot. Hold on to the tension and notice what it feels like. Release the tension in your foot as you exhale. Notice the new feeling of relaxation. Now begin to focus on your lower leg. Tense the muscles in your calves. Hold them tightly and pay attention to the feeling of tension. Release the tension from your lower legs as you exhale. Again, notice the feeling of relaxation. Remember to continue taking deep breaths. Next, as you breathe in, tense the muscles of your upper leg and pelvis. You can do this by tightly squeezing your thighs together. Make sure you, you feel tenseness without going to the point of strain. And release it all. Feel the tension leave your muscles. Begin to tense your stomach and your chest. You can do this by sucking your stomach in. Squeeze harder and hold the tension. And release the tension. Allow your body to go limp. Let yourself notice the feeling of relaxation. Continue taking deep breaths. Breathe in slowly, noticing the air fill your lungs and hold it. Release the air slowly, feel it leaving your lungs. 
Now tense the muscles in your back by bringing your shoulders together behind you. Hold them tightly. Tense them as hard as you can without straining and keep holding. As you exhale, release the tension from your back. Feel the tension slowly leaving your body and the new feeling of relaxation. Notice how your body feels when you allow it to relax. Tense your arms all the way up from your hands to your shoulders. Make a fist and squeeze all the way up your arm. Hold it. Release the tension from your arms and shoulders. Notice the feeling of relaxation in your fingers, hands, arms, and shoulders. Notice how your arms feel limp and at ease. Move up to your head and your neck. Tense your face and your neck by distorting the muscles around your eyes and your mouth. Release the tension. Again, notice the feeling of relaxation. Finally, as you breathe in, tense your entire body. Tense your feet, legs, stomach, chest, arms, head, and neck. Tense harder without straining. Hold it. Now release it all. Allow your body to go limp. Pay attention to the feeling of relaxation and how it is different from the feeling of tension. Begin to wake your body up by slowly moving your muscles. Adjust your arms and your legs. Stretch your muscles and open your eyes when you're ready. Okay, hopefully now you're feeling a little, a little bit more relaxed than you were a few minutes ago as we move on to the rest of the webinar. Okay. So as we know, uh, 2020 has definitely been an unusual year and uh, you know, the impact of COVID-19 has really changed a lot of our routines. Uh, for some of us, it's impacting our employment, it's impacting our daily routines and even how we interact with, e with each other. Uh, many of us have faced changes in our employment status or um, our location of work. Uh, you know, changes in our social networks and even our like community supports and just our daily routines have become so different. As we adjust to a new way of life, it's important to recognize the importance of taking care of ourselves and intentionally building self-care back into our lives. So today we're going to be talking about what exactly self-care is. Oftentimes when we think about self-care, we might think about bubble baths and going on vacation. Um, and although those things are definitely part of self-care, it's not the whole picture. So we're going to be talking a little bit more about what self-care is. So basically, self-care is anything that allows us to care for our physical, emotional, social, and spiritual needs. So the practical strategy that we're going to be discussing today is called the BASE acronym. So for the next few minutes, we're going to go through and talk about what each of the letters means and how we can use the BASE acronym to build self-care back into our lives. Okay, so the first one is B, and that stands for body care. So body care is anything that helps you to take care of your body. So many of us uh, who previously may have, you know, been part of a club or went to the gym or been part of different types of group activities, you might have had your typical form of self-care uh, become unavailable to you. Others may find that our, you know, the change in routine has made it hard to eat regular meals, to drink enough water, to get enough sleep, and to take care of our basic needs. So uh, it's really important to kind of think about, you know, just kind of assess where you're at with that. And, and I've included a couple ways that you can really quickly, uh, you know, take care of your body. So some examples I have here include drinking a glass of water, eating a healthy snack, stretching, going for a walk, meditation and mindfulness practices like the one we just did, uh, grounding techniques, meal prepping, spending some time outside, and finally getting some physical activity. So I, you know, it's important to kind of build those into our um, daily schedule and then uh, even just to, you know, touch base with yourself and think, did I do any of these things today? And, it, you know, would it you know, what having a glass of water, you know, kind of help my overall situation right now, right? So 
A stands for sense of achievement. So believe it or not, but working is actually part of self-care. Um, we all have different forms of work that gives us a sense of accomplishment, whether that be through our employment, chores, errands, childcare, volunteering, and everything else it takes to keep our lives up and running. Many of us have started working from home where all of these duties have become merged together and it's made it a little bit difficult to get all those, you know, everything done. Um, so the, I just have a couple tips here for working from home and building a sense of accomplishment back into our routines. So the first one I have here is to set boundaries and create a schedule. Uh, with much of our work going virtual, it's easy to answer the, you know, answer an email outside of nine to five hours because it only takes five minutes. I know I'm personally uh, guilty of that. Um, but what that does is it makes it hard to set boundaries around when you're going to, you know, take care of different, different faucets of your life. So it's really important to kind of establish a schedule for yourself and think, okay, you know, maybe you, you decide you're not going to answer emails after six or you're going to put things away or that you're going to, you know, force yourself not to do anything over the weekend. Excuse me there. So the second tip that I have is to create a dedicated workspace for yourself. So, um, you know, for many of us who've never had to work from home or um, even if you have, you know, younger kids who are, who are at school and, you know, doing virtual school, um, you've kind of had to make like a makeshift workspace. So it's really important that if you're making a workspace for yourself that you stick to one place. Um, if, if you, and what that does is it tells yourself and others that when you're in your workspace, even if it's your kitchen table, that it's time to work. So, you know, if you're the type that kind of will go from the kitchen to the living room to, you know, outside, um, it, it kind of makes it harder to, again, establish those boundaries. So my third tip is to take care of things that take less than five minutes to do. So um, this is especially helpful on, you know, if you're finding that you're really busy or, um, you know, if you're having one of those days where it's really tough to, like, feel motivated to get those things done, um, if there's anything that you can do in five minutes, it's, um, you'll, you might find that by doing something simple like answering an email, booking an appointment, um, you know, even cleaning up, like tidying up a corner of your home, um, that can really bring it bring about that sense of accomplishment. So then finally, um, I think it's important to recognize that it's normal to be less productive than usual. So, you know, if you're finding that, you know, you're not getting as much done, that's totally okay. And, um, and you can still, you know, find ways to feel a sense of achievement and feel good about that, um, because we are in a global pandemic. Okay. So C stands for connection to others. So um, unfortunately for many of us, social distancing can, can unfortunately mean social isolation. Uh, not only are we not able to see our friends and family in the same way that we used to, um, I think another piece that's also kind of under, maybe understated is kind of those informal support networks you might have. So an example, um, you know, could be, you know, if that person at the coffee shop that you used to see, um, you know, a lot of us have kind of lost some of those more informal connections. You know, it might not be as, um, you know, front of mind as, you know, being able to see your friends and family and neighbors, but um, just thought, I just thought that that was um, an interesting piece as well. Um, many of us have been able to, you know, uh, adapt using technology like FaceTime and Skype to connect with others. And when you're thinking about building self-care back into your lives, it, it can be really um, beneficial to, you know, take some time every day, even if it's just shooting someone, like shooting someone a message, to letting them know that you're thinking of them, or even booking, you know, like a Zoom call with some friends or family. Okay. So E stands for enjoyment, so, or entertainment, and this is anything that we do for fun. So this is kind of the, you know, bubble baths and vacation category, which I mentioned is kind of what a lot of people think of when they think of self-care. So, um, of course, it's really important that, you know, you're doing things that you enjoy and that you're building it in into your daily or weekly routines. So for some people, this could be things like 
um, you know, watching a show at the end of the day or, you know, spending time with friends or um, knitting or any other hobby that you're into. Um, yeah, it's really important, of course, to, to build those things in as well. Okay, so that's the base acronym with uh, B is body care, A is sense of achievement, C is connection to others, and E is enjoyment or entertainment. So really, it's just a tool that we can use to monitor our self-care habits. Um, it can be helpful to mentally run through this checklist on a daily basis, especially on tough days. I found sometimes, you know, when I was having like a tough day, I would kind of go through this acronym and, and realize, wow, I actually haven't done, you know, any really anything under any of these categories. Um, so it's kind of like when you realize that, that you can kind of start to build things back in. And that's why I tried to add a lot of things that are very simple and really focusing on things that take under five minutes. So under body care, you know, drinking a glass of water or having a nutritious snack or, you know, sending someone a text message to, you know, try and connect with them even just for a few minutes. Um, and then the other way that you can use it um, on the flip side is if you have found that your schedule has been kind of um, uprooted to kind of build that schedule back in. So for example, um, you know, under body care, could you join like a virtual fitness class? Um, or, you know, or again, like booking, you know, Zoom calls with friends and family and kind of like building, like intentionally building those things back into your lives. So again, it can work either way. And I think it's a really nice tool because you can be intentional about building it in, or it can be just a mental checklist for yourself, um, even when you're really busy. Okay, and a couple of resources I just wanted to share. Um, uh, the first one is uh, Morneau Chappelle and Mind Beacon. They have an ICBT program and the government of either Ontario or Canada recently committed some funding to make this program free for um, everyone. So uh, basically it's a, um, you get access to a therapist and they kind of guide you through the programs and it's all done virtually. The other one I thought was kind of cool was uh, seethedoctor.ca. Um, so it's kind of similar, except it's for seeing a doctor online. So this could be really useful for, you know, if you were planning to go to the doctor for like, um, or even like a clinic just to get some of those things done. Um, it allows you to get a lot done without having to be physically present. Okay, so that's it. Um, I can go back to the previous slide, but otherwise, if you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Okay, there was a question earlier, um, Michelle, uh, Kathy has answered it, um, but we will open up the floor for other questions. It was regarding, um, Michelle, Marcel wanted to know what was considered grounding activity. Um, so that was one of the ones we actually had that came in the box earlier. Okay. Okay, at this time, if we have any questions, um, you can unmute yourself again, or if you just want to put it in the chat um, for Michelle, she will be taking questions at this time. Not everybody all at once. <laughs> Michelle, can you tell, talk a little bit again about the See the Doctor? Sure, yeah. So I, uh, I don't know too much about it, I have, um, but I, I did learn about it last week. Um, I, so I, um, in my job, I work with uh, families and they kind of, you know, told me about it, but um, they said it's been like very accessible. Um, and yeah, I guess you just go to see the doctor.ca and I think the website is pretty intuitive. So um, I think you can probably book an appointment or, and, uh, and then, yeah, it's, it's completely done um, virtually. Thank you. So there were a few more questions here. Um, Linda asked, how can we support friends who are having difficulties? I don't know if you want to. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think 
you know, the best way to support people who might be having difficulties is just to reach out to them and um, let them know that, uh, that you're there for them. Um, and, and continuing to reach out. I think, you know, sometimes it's easy to like send one, you know, one message. And um, sometimes when people are having difficulties, it can be easy or it, it can be difficult to reach out and, and, you know, be honest about what's going on. So, um, you know, without pressuring people um, and, you know, forcing them to open up, but just, you know, uh, inviting them to go do things if, if that's, a, if they're in your social circle or, you know, just continuing to let them know that you're there for them. And one more question they had was, um, if you can kind of go into more detail about ICBT and what the difference is between that and just cognitive behavioral therapy. Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, CBT stands for cognitive behavioral therapy, which is a type of therapy um, you might go to if, if you were to see a therapist or a social worker in person. So the difference between uh, CBT and ICBT is pretty much the I stands for like, um, like on the internet, right? So my understanding of this program is that um, a lot of the mod, like they have online modules that you can complete. And then um, the therapist or social worker um, is someone you can connect with to kind of fill the gap and, um, and speak with them. So it's kind of like a mixed model where you're speaking to someone virtually and then also um, like doing the modules online. And um, are these resources free or is there a, a subscription or something? Yeah, all of these resources are free right now. I don't know if I missed any questions. I think that's all that it was. Um, are there any more questions? Um, there was actually one more at the bottom here. Actually, a couple more just came in, Ashana. There's one that says, uh, is see the doctor only related to mental health? No, see the doctor is um, more so related to physical health. So that would be like any, uh, anything that you would go to like a clinic doctor for, you could potentially um, uh, go see them for. And then, yeah, the ICBT program, that would be more like your mental health piece. Okay. Um. Um, one other question that just came in was how would you handle your down days? Um, yeah, I guess on, on down days, that's definitely something, um, that would be a good opportunity to, you know, check out that base acronym and really engage in some extra self care. Um, so, you know, thinking in terms of what can I do in five minutes, because I wouldn't want to say like, you know, for self care, you should go you know, work out for an hour, because sometimes that's not always realistic, right? Um, so one thing you can do is even kind of think of a plan ahead of time, and, um, or, or in the moment, even just think, what can I do for my body right now? Or what can I do to feel like I've done something to for like that sense of accomplishment? Um, and, and kind of just running through that list. And, and I, yeah, I think focusing on things that um, are easy to do and then will kind of help you feel like, okay, I actually got some things done today and I, you know, I had a tough day, but, you know, I did take care of myself too. Okay. Um... Okay. There's one, it says someone mentioned it above. So my question is similar. I'm on a roster with my doctor. So what happens in, if I go to see, goes to see the doctor? Do you have any idea? So um, I don't think there would be any information sharing. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not 100% I can't hear anybody. But yeah, I don't think that they would like share information. So that's something if, you know, if, if it could impact like your plan with your doctor, um, it might not be the best option. Um, it might be something, you know, more for if, if, uh, if you kind of had like a short term, uh, you just needed to get something done quickly that you could potentially get a prescription filled or something. 
Um, but yeah, there wouldn't, I don't think it has like that, um, like they wouldn't really know if you, like your primary doctor probably wouldn't realize that you went if that's kind of what you're asking. Um, Kathy has been answering some of the questions as we go along, um, Michelle. Oh. Just so, so you know, um, she's put some information up here on uh, regarding see the doctor. Um, some of the services that they offer that's on their website. Um, you do need an OHIP card. I think there was a couple of questions regarding that. Okay. Uh, so an OHIP card is required. Um, but it from, uh, yeah, Kathy has listed a number of things and it seems pretty straightforward. Um, um, so, so if they need if required, if it, they do require your OHIP card, then I would assume it, there is a fee to it, but it is covered by OHIP. Does that sound logical? I would sure? think so, yeah. Okay. Um, I think any more questions? We do have some more time. Um, if you do have other questions, um, Michelle is a social worker, so there might be a, if you have something burning um, that you could think of that you maybe want to ask that maybe is not directly related to this webinar. And if it's within the realm of something she could answer, I'm sure she would be more than happy to as well. Um, I'm also just thinking if there's maybe questions that people have that they don't feel comfortable like asking in front of everybody is there a way for people to maybe ask that question privately and like we can correspond through email or something okay okay we do have uh can you revisit um a topic that you discussed earlier um it says could you revisit ach achievement if you're feeling down because out of work and not feeling connected Mm -hmm. to feel in purposeful. So can you just um, elaborate a little bit more on that, please? Shall? Sure. So yeah, I guess um, that's something that's definitely, you know, a lot of people maybe have had changes to their employment, whether they were laid off or um, uh, whatnot. So um, yeah, I, I think that, you know, some just kind of think, you know, um, like recognizing that it, it most likely is, you know, not anything that you did person, you know, personally, it's kind of like the circumstance of, of uh, like the world right now. Um, so just kind of practicing some of that self-compassion and, and, um, you know, knowing that it's, you know, there, there was nothing that, that you could have done differently, unfortunately, um, if you are in the position that you lost your job. Um, and then, you know, day to day, um, you know, it, it, like I know a lot, like some people, you know, if you've been working the same job for a long time, you might kind of get, be used to getting that sense of accomplishment through your job. I know that's the case for a lot of us is, you know, you, you go to work and, and you feel like, you know, connected to your job and, and then to suddenly lose that can be really hard. So, um, I, I guess if that's kind of the case for you to, you know, think about what are some other ways that I can um, get that sense of accomplishment. And that's going to be different based on, you know, whatever your role was or whatever your specific situation. Um, and then, yeah, day to day um, in terms of, you know, if, if you're used to being like a busy uh, nine to fiver who, you know, was was kind of out there, you know, working away, um, kind of thinking about, okay, well, what are some ways that I can feel, you know, accomplished now? And what are some ways that I'll feel more, you know, connected and more like aligned with my personal mission? And, um, and, and then also just, you know, um, what are some things that I can do daily to feel like I'm accomplishing maybe that goal of getting back into the workforce? Okay, do we have any other questions at this time? Someone actually wrote a question that I think is quite, um, it's quite a good one. It says, are there any free sources of long-term therapy? 
if you do not have extended health insurance. Mm -hmm. So, uh, unfortunately, like not, uh, it's kind of discombobulated right now. The ICBT is um, free for everyone. Um, another, like. Um, resource I could suggest is potentially um, like through health teams. Um, I know there's a lot throughout Ontario. Um, for example, in Windsor, we have Windsor Family Health Team um, and they have a program like called Team Care Center. But basically through the health teams in Ontario, um, they do have, you know, some free therapy resources, but I think you have to be connected to a doctor there. Um, so one of your best bets to start if you're trying to look for some free therapy resources would be through your family doctor, uh, because sometimes they have connections, like they're able to send, you know, uh, send a referral um, to some free resources in your specific communities. Okay, I have, um, okay, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Quebec. Um, there was a question. Um, one second, let me go back. Uh, do you know if it is covered by RAM, RAMQ in Quebec, or is it just Ontario or HIP? Would you have any idea about that, Tam? Um, um, I'm not sure. I, I think it might be like a Canada-wide uh, program. Um, I, I'm fairly certain it is. So your best bet, I guess, would be, like are you, if you're talking about like the ICBT, or mm -hmm. um, like both of these resources. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, if you were to go to the website, um, it should tell you pretty quickly, but um, my understanding is that it, it is Canada wide. Okay. I was just wanting to say that I know in Ontario, um, cause I was uh, informed of that um, not long ago, there's also the bounce back program that you can yeah. register yourself or have someone referred. So it is, that's only in Ontario though. Yeah, yeah. Bounce Back is another really great program. It's it's uh, similar, like it's a similar structure. They have um, uh, like kind of that blended um, module base and then like with a therapist as well. Um, so yeah, that's another good resource <coughs> if, uh, if you're trying to decide between a couple. Okay. Um, there was another question. Do you have strategies or resources for self-compassion? Um, yeah, there, uh, yeah, so self-compassion is, you know, the, the idea of, you know, kind of, you know, uh, you know, thinking of things, maybe not, um, like not blaming yourself for some things. Um, so let me just see if I have a, give me one second. <laughs> So I'm going to go over, has anybody heard of um, kind of the cognitive mind, um, cognitive mind traps that as we sometimes talk about in cognitive behavioral therapy? I'm kind of go over a couple different, different ones. So these are some, you know, ways of thinking that we have that sometimes aren't helpful. So for example, um, we have all or nothing thinking. So that's kind of thinking um, you know, it, like going back to that job loss kind of example, you know, thinking I'm, if I'm not perfect, I've failed. Or if I didn't, you know, if I lost my job now, I'm never going to get a job again. Right. And, um, you know, that can be kind of a, like, you know, kind of thinking like I'm either going to do it or I'm either going to not. Um, Another one that's really good would be personalization. I'm sure a lot of people might be feeling that. So personalization is feeling that something is your fault. So, you know, if you got laid off because of COVID-19, I could see that it could be easy to think, well, it's my fault for getting, you know, maybe I was lower on the, you know, totem pole of employees or maybe um, thinking, you know, like kind of thinking that it's that there's anything beyond your control for those, um, for, you know, getting laid off. Um, what's another good one? So, uh, we could also say, <clears throat> you know, emo emotional reasoning, that's a good one too. So if I feel a certain way, then it must be true. You know, if I feel embarrassed to have been laid off, then, you know, it must, then I must be, um, 
disgust. You know, I must have done something embarrassing mm -hmm. and I should feel shame for that. So these are all kind of some ways that we can kind of maybe not practice self-compassion towards ourselves. And when we can identify those things and kind of externalize, well, you know, maybe that's it, looking at it from a step back, maybe that's not quite the case. And maybe, you know, there are some external reasons beyond my control. I just named a couple, but if you want to kind of look at more, you can look up um, unhelpful thinking styles, uh, like in cognitive behavioral therapy. I'm just trying to see if we missed anything. Ashana, did we miss anything? Can you see? Um, I don't think so. I think um, we've got all the questions. We do have, again, um, Kathy has posted a few websites there, um, as well as um, Cindy has posted. Um, we will try and make a note of those and um, we could perhaps try and, you know, um, if anyone is interested um, or haven't gotten all the information, if you haven't had a chance to write those down, we, you can always email me. I did put my email address up and we will get that information to you. Um, um, so she, uh, there was a question as well. How does a person find a social worker in their area? Uh, so yeah, your best bet. Um, so you can Google social workers if you're looking for a social worker for like therapy. Um, I, I know like s websites like Psychology Today and, um, and, and just a Google search will take you to their business pages. Um, and then if you're looking for something that would be like a free resource, uh, uh, I would go through your doctor and see if they have anything available to you. Okay. Actually, we've got a very good group here tonight. We've got a lot of support coming in. Ashley has mentioned Ontario Shores. Cindy has mentioned uh, through PAC in York Region. Um, yeah, so we've got some really good information. Everyone is really participating tonight. Um, thank you very much, everyone. Um, just, just having a quick look to see if there was anything else. We've got areas in Vaughan mentioned as well, the dorm region, um, York region. Um, so as we can see, there's a lot of support out there. Um, definitely a lot of support. Um, and I think this topic has been very forthcoming at a time like this going through COVID. Um, you know, we, I, we're all, I mean, we, we were, summer was looking up, the numbers were really good. And I think everyone was looking for something positive going into the fall. But as we can see, um, this, this webinar, Michelle, is very timely because we are, it looks like we're somewhat going, you know, backwards. So I'm, I'm hoping everyone here tonight will be able to take away something or one of some of these resources, knowing that um, there are there are sources like you're not alone. Um, I think COVID-19 have, you know, a lot of people because of the self isolation has felt alone. But um, Lupus Ontario is also one of the resources you have. So we are here to help in whatever way we can. Um, you just have to go on the website. You just have to email, call the office. Um, someone will get back to you. If you are feeling alone, if you do need some support, um, we do have support um, you know, in Durham and a few other areas, but um, we do have a provincial um, support meeting every month as well. So I'm just putting that out there. Um, you know, that to know, let you know that there are resources and there definitely support and Lupus <laughs> Ontario is very, um, very interested in what is happening to our members at large, uh, especially at a time like this. Uh, it looks like there's some new messages. Um, Ashana, can you just see if there was anything new that's coming that we need to go over, please? Um, taking a look, I don't see any questions right now. Oh, there is one actually. I just saw one. It came in a bit earlier though. Did we? I'm not sure if we did discuss it. It says, "What about dealing with fear slash anxiety about going out in the community with COVID and lupus?" 
Yeah, so that's a that's a really valid concern, right? It, I think that's important to acknowledge is that it it you know there I can understand some some fears about going out. Um, if if you feel that the fears that you're having are like impacting your ability to to go out and do the things that you need to do, um, it might be helpful for you to access some of the resources that um, like either finding someone through your doctor or the, the ICBT programs. Um, and, and um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure if there's too much I can say about um, like rationalizing fear because I think some level of fear is valid. And, you know, we do need to do what we, um, what we can to stay safe. Um, and, and, and yeah, I think, um, yeah, if it, you know, some level of fear is normal and, and that's okay. And, and then, yeah, if you feel that it, it is impacting you, that it's, that you can, there are resources and you can chat with someone about that. Okay. And Jeremy has posted that, um, you know, the upcoming support meeting webinars will be on post social media. So please keep an eye on that as well as in the monthly newsletter. <laughs> and um, just as Jeremy has brought that up, if you are not getting our monthly newsletter, can you please contact the office, Lupus Ontario? There's a toll-free number. If you're not in um, the local area, please do contact us or just go online. There's a drop-down box on the homepage that says um, you can just sign up for the newsletter there. Okay. Uh, we've even got information for Keswick. So we've got definitely information right across the province. Um, we've got a, um, a number of people here also right across the province as well, which is fabulous. Um, so um, seeing that tonight we have a, a group and we do have about a few more minutes to go. If no one else have any questions or um, if you do have a last minute question for Michelle, we could uh, go back. But just before we, um, I'm gonna do my close out to Michelle. I would like to thank her for taking her time uh, presenting this very timely mm -hmm. webinar to um, our lupus uh, community. We do appreciate it. We appreciate your time. Uh, your support. Um, like I said, Michelle is actually one of the support and education members, so I'm sure you will be seeing more from her as well as um, we have a number of other team members on this call, so um, we'll be reaching out to you. So thank you very much, Michelle. We do appreciate your time. And um, seeing that we do have a few minutes left, I would like to Ask uh, if you could maybe just type this in your chat, um, just so we can have a record of it. We will be sending out a webinar, sorry, not a webinar, a survey. Um, to, and basically what we'd like to know is what are some of the things you would like to see coming from Lupus Education, coming from the um, Education Committee, coming from Lupus Ontario? Um, do you feel, feel Lupus Ontario is fulfilling that need? Um, are you getting everything you would like to from Lupus Ontario? So if you, if anyone do have, um, a uh, few as far as the survey go and just you know what are some of the webinars that you would like to see coming up if you could just type that in the chat that would be a great help to us moving forward as we plan the 2021 calendar um we do have a couple of very interested webinars coming up in october we have the nurse from lupus uh, the lupus clinic will be talking about skin infection and in uh, november we have dr easterbrook which will be talking about uh, Placanil on the eye. So some very interested in um, webinars coming up, but we also want to know what are some of the things you would like to hear about? What are some of the webinars you would like to participate uh, moving forward and what you would like to see in 2021? Checking to see, um, we've got some. Okay, 
Okay, Kathy's gonna be sharing something with us in a moment, but I just wanna make sure we haven't missed anything else. So these are some of the the the, the questions that will probably be coming for coming in the in um, in the survey that we'll be sending out. But of course, like I said, we want to also <coughs> hear your opinion. So um, you know, just make a note in the chat. What are some of the things you would like to see moving forward as well? Okay. Yes, we are looking forward to going back to those in-person group, Ashley. I know, um, unfortunately, with uh, the COVID situation in Peru, we will be doing these online sessions for now. But yes, it will be really wonderful when we can go back to our in-person groups, for sure. Um, I think we're all looking forward to that. Okay, do we have any last-minute questions for Michelle before we wrap up? We, you guys have been awesome. Great, great audience tonight. Thank you all for your feedback. Um, we're still getting some information. Okay. Kathy has a question. Hi, Kathy has a question. Okay. She said, why to mention the Ottawa first date? Um, yeah, sure, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, Eastern Ontario. Okay, we're working. Um, Chrissy, um, we are, uh, Kathy, uh, we are working on getting, hopefully having, uh, putting together a group for Ottawa. Um, we're hoping to launch that in December. Uh, let me just see what else we put we'll there, one in the West. Uh, Marcel, we are also working to hopefully get one in, um, in Mississauga, but oh. we're also looking for volunteers, volunteers who might be willing to uh, become a facilitators. Um, if there's a, not a support oh. group in your area, and you are willing, we do have training. Training is provided for all the facilitators. Um, so if, you're, if there's not a group in your location and you might be interested in starting a group, you just have to contact us and we will do some training. We will get some advertising. We have Jeremy and the social committee to get you know some, um, some people in your local area. Um, so please keep that in mind for the ones who are interested, who are asking about um, their, their areas. If you, are def if you are interested, we can definitely um, help you to start one in your area. Okay. Okay, Kristen. Um, you can also send me an email and I will give you some information. Uh, I think you said you're new to Lupus, mm -hmm. so you can just send me an email as well. Um, okay, no problem, thank you. Okay, I'm just, um, I'm just being patient, guys. I just really wanna make sure we haven't missed anyone or anything. Thank you for all the feedback um, regarding the webinars that you would see, like to see. We will definitely be working on those for 2021. 
Um, um, Kathy, what is De what is December fourteenth? It's the first um, on online Ottawa support group meeting. It's in the evening. I can't remember if it's seven or seven thirty, and it's um, it'll be here. I don't know if you can see it. The support page here. Oh. When you scroll down, all the groups are listed, and very soon the Ottawa dates will be posted here. So, like, you can see the Windsor, the Durham, Ottawa. So, we just have to add in now that we have an actual date. But you can always um, find the local group. And Sandra was also mentioning information, the Living Well with Lupus Facts booklet, the updated 2020, you can download from the support page. Okay. Okay. Well, if we don't have any more questions, I would love to thank my support team um, for putting um, putting this together. Michelle, thank you so much again. We do appreciate your time. And thank you all for, for joining us tonight. We look forward to seeing you in October. And again, anything you would like to share, you have my email. Please do email me. I'm looking for a lot of help. Um, this role is new to me, so I do need all of your support. And we're all working together as a team. So thank you so much. You have a great night, everyone.